Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you so much for joining me here. We're almost at the full moon uh, in Leo, which is happening on the 5th of February. Happy weekend everyone and I hope that you're all doing well. I'm doing a different spread today I'm going to introduce to you. I hope that you're going to enjoy it. I think we'll be doing it more on um, full moons, new moons. I think that that's when we should be doing this spread uh, randomly. So, okay, it's uh, many of you that follow Divine Debut 11. You are very familiar with the planets and we know that planets are archetypes as well as that uh, they are energies, they are frequencies that we uh, as part of the collective all feel. Okay, And coming up to uh, full moon we know it can be a lot of stress. Um, Leo a Leo full moon means the sun is in Aquarius. Happy birthday, dear Aquarius. And the moon is transiting Leo. So they're in opposition to each other. Anyway, um, we'll be using the moonology at the end of the reading where I'll be taking a card for each sign. I will have the timestamps beneath so that you could uh, check out more specifically what could possibly be playing out for you on this full moon. Remember, full moon um, lasts a couple of weeks until the new moon. So at this reading will be at least for a couple of weeks. It could be uh, playing out, uh, resonating with you, um, or even a month until the next new moon. Okay, let's see why we're talking about the planets because this is called the planetary tarot spread. So those of you that are not familiar with the energies of the uh, the planets, uh, stay with us. You will learn a lot as we um, talk about it. Okay, so as all zodiac signs have got a ruling planet, obviously um, I'll be talking about uh, which sign which zodiac sign is ruled by which planet. So obviously uh, the position of your ruling planet would be extra information for you pertaining to this full moon. So let's go along. Um, let's begin and we will talk about it as we are uh, doing the spread. Okay, so Archangels. Divine Spirit, please guide me on this full moon with this planetary tarot spread. What are the energies, the frequencies? What is culminating? What is completing? Remember, a full moon is always a culmination. It is like a pregnant woman, right? A pregnant woman. As we know that the uh, moon takes the light of the sun, the moon uh, fills out, so something is ending, completing, culminating. So, dear spirit, please guide me. Thank you. What's going on? And uh, before I um, do this, before I take the spread, uh, we've already uploaded the February um, general and love readings with extended love readings through Patreon and through my website for the first six signs from Aries until Virgo. The next six signs will be up in the next couple of days. Thank you for your patience and special thank you to my patrons. All right, first position is the moon. It's the position of the moon. So it's position number one. I will turn these uh, in a moment. Okay, position number two is uh, the planet Mercury. Okay, so you can also, um, so the moon is ruled by Cancer. I should say Cancer, um, the moon rules Cancer. Um, so this would be, this position would be more significant for two Cancerian people. But also I would say to, uh, 
to Leo as well because the full moon is happening in Leo. We've got um, Mercury, which is the messenger here, position number two. Mercury does rule Gemini and Virgo. So Gemini and Virgo can uh, possibly look at that position for more information. Position number three is Aphrodite, Venus. Okay, Venus uh, rules Taurus as well as Libra. And Venus, we know, is the, the uh, goddess of love. She's all about peace, tranquility, things uh, that we love, romance, all those things come under Venus. Art, all these things are beautiful and they're all connected with Venus, Aphrodite. Um, crowning is the sun, everyone. And we know that the sun rules Leo. So uh, this is position number four. What is the sun? The sun is the masculine, the yang energy um, amongst all of us. We're all made up of uh, the yin, uh, moon, and the yang, um, the sun. So we know the sun is the ego. It can speak to healing, clarity, uh, children, anything that we create as well. So Leo would look more at this position. Uh, but also I'm going to say with this full moon, because the, the sun is transiting through Aquarius, Aquarius, you can also check out this position. Now, position number five is Mars, the god of war and action and being driven and can be very combative. Where do you put your energy? Mars rules uh, Aries. Um, but also Scorpio. Scorpio and Aries come under uh, the Mars position here. Um, but Mars can also speak to um, enemies, how to act, how to take action, your energy levels, but also could speak to um, obstacles. Let's look at position number six, which is Jupiter. Um, Jupiter, which is uh, Zeus in mythology. So Jupiter, of course, rules Sagittarius, but also Pisces. So both Sagittarian people and Pisces can uh, look at this position here and see. We'll be taking more cards, obviously, and we'll see what what is Jupiter. Jupiter is luck. It's uh, is the planet of abundance, uh, wins, gains, um, growth, justice, truth, uh, long distance, um, higher education, foreigners, all these things are, are Jupiterian. And uh, Jupiter can also be a very spiritual planet. Remember, he rules Pisces. And, uh, of course, Pisces is all about compassion, love. Okay, so Jupiter, we know, is the benefic of uh, our solar system. He brings luck usually, but he can also possibly bring separation. He expands on everything he touches. So if he is in good aspect, then he will bring, he will expand on the good aspects. If he is with a difficult planet, a difficult aspect, in the astrology, then he can expand on the difficulties or the challenges. Okay, and the last position, Kronos, Saturn. Saturn, the lord of karma and timing and blockages, limitations. Um, Saturn, of course, uh, rules Capricorn, but also Aquarius. Okay, so Capricorn and Aquarius uh, could be looking at this position here as well. All right, so we've got seven positions here. We've got the seven main planet, the planets, the not the um, outer planets, dear friends, not the planets that have been um, discovered recently. These are the original uh, planets. So I think that these are. An, this is enough. Um, we could start off with these planets and of course this is a full moon reading so we're looking at the general energies remember 
and we'll be taking also a Moonology. Let's see what the general energy is, and we've got the full card here. The full card we know uh, is a new journey, something new begins. Remember, a full moon is always about a culmination and an ending, and this is Aries energy. Um, Mars, um, many times uh, we could say that this is Uranus too, and Uranus is like something that happens very unexpectedly. Now, on this full moon, on this full moon, um, this full moon is going to be in um, in in a difficult aspect uh, to Uranus. So expect unexpected surprises, unexpected things happening, things just playing out, tower moments. Um, there's there's some sort of a pressure point where things have got to change, or we have to find a different way to move forward um, a more intelligent way we can also through this full moon because the full moon remember is the moon is our subconscious it's things that are hidden um, the moon can also rule things to do with the home your your personal life your emotional life things connected to the home the past um, and to our subconscious, the moon can speak to fears as well. So the uh, full moon will be taking the light of the sun. So things that have been hidden or in our subconscious will be shown to us uh, from the sun transiting uh, through Aquarius. Um, and Leo, we know, is the leader. Le Leo is confidence. It's uh, generosity. It's matters pertaining to the heart. Leo is the individual, so the moon is culminating there pertaining to the individual, the ability to create, to uh, have romance, to take a risk on love. All these things will be shown to us. And, of course, the sun uh, transiting through Aquarius. Aquarius is the humanitarian. It is people that we socialize with. It's our friendships. It's our wishes. It's what we're dreaming of. This is what the sun will be showing us, the reflection onto the moon. We see the full moon. Something is ending and culminating and completing. Remember that the uh, sun in Aquarius, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. So as I said, there's a difficult aspect with Uranus. So expect the unexpected revelations, aha moments will be happening. Maybe they've already shown up for you. For some people, maybe you've already had those revelations, those uh, new ideas, uh, new possibilities. Um, but this will be more about the awareness of it, uh, the awareness of something that is completing. Okay, so let's look at the moon position. And we've got the star here. So um, the moon speaks to our close environment and to our home, and all the other things that I mentioned before. So, generally speaking, for all of us, as we're all part of the collective, right, uh, the moon position, things that have been hidden with this full moon will be shown to us, and they could be connected to the future. Um, these could be messages coming through from the internet. The star we know is a card of heart, uh, hope, and healing and possible things that are promised uh, for the future uh, at a timely future um, or at a, a physical distance because the star is usually something that's quite far away something that we're hoping uh, and the star can also speak to a possible progression towards our goals so again this is pertaining to our home, um, our close environment, anything to do with the mother is the moon. Okay. Um, the star, remember, is Aquarius, and that's where the sun is transiting through. So there's great promise here. And um, maybe also because we've had a new moon in... Um, 
in Aquarius. So two weeks ago, something, you know, that seed was planted and maybe we're having the understanding of what that is. Remember, a, a new moon is when the sun and the moon come together and that new moon was in Aquarius. So that seed has been planted. I hope that you've sent out, sent out your wishes to spirit. Something is shown to us nevertheless. So there's great promise here. Okay, pertaining to th things that were hidden. Mm. And remember, the moon can also speak to a strong psychic ability. So even, you know, just gazing up at the stars, uh, you may have some sort of signs or uh, synchronicities pertaining to a wish fulfillment, a possible progression towards a, a wish fulfillment. Okay, anything to do with social media, groups, people that you connect with. Uh, something that you see connected to a home, connected to your environment, connected to um, things that uh, you had, things that you felt but were you were not conscious of. This could be you becoming conscious of a possible wish fulfillment. Okay, let's go. As I said, remember that it's cancer. Cancer is... Um, this, the position here with the moon. So for Cancerian people, this is uh, more likely to be playing out for you. All right, let's uh, go to the next position, which is Mercury. Mercury, the messenger of the gods. Um, Mercury is Hermes in mythology. Ace of Swords, which does speak to perception, it's air. And we know Mercury is all about our logic. It's our left linear brain, how we think logically. Um, this could pertain to messages, but Mercury doesn't only rule uh, logics, logistics, information, messages. Uh, Mercury also rules um, commerce and business and the internet, as does, of course, um, Uranus, which I was talking about with a star here. Um, so we've got an Ace of Swords here. Uh, Ace of Swords is a victory card. It's the ability to, to see things clearly or to sever ties, okay, with a situation maybe that we're not happy with. Remember, um, Mercury rules Gemini as well as uh, Virgo. So, of course, uh, Gemini is all about, it can rule uh, siblings, it can rule um, extended relatives, um, short distance travel, anything to do with information, but also matters pertaining to health and youth, as Mercury is the youth of the our solar system. It rules uh, the younger generation. Interesting, um, with this Ace of Swords, this is clarity, this is understanding, and this can speak to truth as well. Uh, potential for a new beginning. Remember, Mercury does bring the messages. So there is going to be some sort of clarity, maybe also some sort of cutting away. Um, this could be a double-edged sword, the Ace of Swords, as I always say. Um, and uh, energy of reckoning, needing to stand strong in truth, speak truthfully, see things from a logical perspective, possibly make a decision, also connected to health. Uh, Virgo does rule work as well as health. So in the areas of health and work, there could be messages, some sort of clarity coming in. All right. Let's take position number three, which is Venus and Aphrodite. Aphrodite in mythology, the goddess of love, uh, peace, tranquility, um, finances, self-worth, uh, anything that makes us feel good. Taurus and Libra come under Aphrodite. So we see here with the Nine of Swords, there's a lot of stress and anxiety uh, connected to matters uh, of love and emotions. Right? Libra is justice. Libra is equilibrium, being in a balanced partnership relationship. Uh, it could be work partnerships, doesn't have to be only love. Any relationships can come under Libra. Now Taurus is Taurus is things that are physical and tangible, things that we can 
relate to in a um, in an earthly matter. Taurus um, does speak to self-worth. It's the physical body and our finances. So there could be a lot of stress and anxiety around things that are unknown. Some of you could be having sleepless nights, maybe just being too much about the details. I don't know if some of you are dealing with legalities as well, uh, where they've been, there's been injustices pertaining to finances uh, and relationships, right? And partnerships work. But also... Um, Aphrodite can also speak to art, okay, art and um, things uh, that we create that are very, very artistic, things that bring us peace. I see that um, there's not much peace here and there's a lot of anxiety and uh, some of you may be staying up at night. Remember, full moons are always uh, very stressful as well. Um, so a lot of insomnia here i don't know some of you could be having nightmares as well remember a full moon in leo uh, it is the house of creation something that we create to bring to the world leo is leadership right it's leadership it's being seen being seen out there in the world and uh this could also speak to possible i suppose information uh that is will be uh that we'll be seeing, and it is, it is connected to the sun moving through Aquarius, so connected to groups and people that you socialize with, um, information coming from your friendships, anything to do with politics as well is the uh, natural 11th house of Aquarius. Politics, um, earned income after career, a lot of worry pertaining to that. Let's look at the position here now of the sun. And we've got the king of coins here. So uh, king of coins we know he is a father. He could be a boss. He could be a CEO, a manager. King of coins um, is a very experienced king. Of, obviously, it's all about our securities, financial, emotional securities, uh, responsibilities, of course, uh, fatherhood issues, motherhood issues, king of coins um, in the uh, position of the sun. This is a leader, no doubt. This is someone maybe that has got uh, a position of leadership. Remember that the sun rules Leo. Now, there could be some ego here. Um, but also because uh, Leo... Leo is the natural fifth house, which is the house of romance, uh, children, creativity, risk-taking, um, and fun. Looks like it's not much of a fun uh, full moon. It's more about our securities, I would say here. The ability to take leadership to create, possibly also to take maybe risks that are taken um, where romance and creativity or something that one is creating and it could be connected to their money. So a risk between um, someone's position maybe also in society, who they are, how they're seen out in the world. So possibly also reputation. Um, but the King of Coins is a very positive uh very, very positive card. It speaks to security, being grounded and taking uh, baby steps, right? Um, walking um, towards, and there is a lot of experience here in the King of Coins. There's a lot of security. Um, it's more so maybe someone that's taken a risk and that's uh, going to uh, receive the accolades, the rewards, the security, or that there's still a risk in that uh, in that sense. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Uh, remember that um, the the sun is like being up on stage. How we um, show ourselves. So obviously our reputation, who we are, and the sun speaks to successes. So this does promise success, great success, and 
and uh, financial uh, success as well. Let's go to position number five. Uh, Leo should be uh, very um, happy about this, but we'll take a couple more cards and see. Let's go to position number five and Mars. Ares, um, the god of war and combat. Now, as I said, um, Mars uh, rules Aries as well as Scorpio, so this is significant for Aries and Scorpio. I love this card. I love this Three of Wands because it shows like something that we've envisioned or that we've hoped for, something that we've worked for where we've put our energy. That vision could be... Um, shown to us at this time it's it's great promise right three of wands is like the rewards uh, a moment of success after having put in the energy and having the courage to move towards that now the three of wands obviously speaks to uh, possible physical distance as well um, as we see this a person waiting at the dock for their ships to come in but possibly also um maybe dealing with another person waiting on the action that they'll be taking or the turnaround, the rewards after the effort being put in. This is like having something that we're visioning, it's coming through. There's great promise in this card. Now, it does speak to this position and Mars can speak to blockages. I do feel that the blockages would have been around uh, from October last year and even up to now. I feel as though we may also, for some of us, need to wait um, until possibly late March uh, until, or even early March until we actually see this uh, turnaround, these rewards. Okay, now Mars can also speak to hidden enemies. Uh, not hidden enemies, just enemies. Uh, and... Uh, This position also speaks to how to take action. So I don't know if the enemy is the time here. Some of you, and remember, Mars is uh, doesn't hold much patience, right? We know Aries, Aries, which is ruled by Mars, is cardinal fire. It's all about taking action, you know, bringing in changes. So there's possible change here uh, as long as we keep doing the work. Right, And I believe here it's not about sitting and waiting. I believe that it's, it's about uh, continuing to put in the effort and at a certain time the rewards will come in. It's not about the imagination here. It's about the three of wands. I mean, they hold great promise. Right, So this is the vision that we've worked towards, where we've put our efforts now, there's been frustration and blockages, possibly since last October. Um, but whatever it is that's going on here, because remember that uh, Scorpio also is ruled by Mars, and uh, Scorpio is um, all about a death and a metamorphosis, so uh, possible changes as well as having dealt with past karma that we're needing to shed and let go of. Right, so even if if it's something that's been sort of holding us back, um, maybe we've had, maybe there's been some sort of a, a green light or there will be some sort of a green light that, yes, our ship is going to come in. Um, but remember that a if we're dealing with karma, things that we need to shed, we need to be able to make space for the new to come in. Um, yeah, and Scorpio does rule fears as well. And Mars is not a planet. Uh, Ares, the god of fighting and the god of courage, uh, does not fear. He does not fear the dark. Um, he's used to the dark and he is very combative and ready to take action. Nothing will stop him. So I feel here this is a very positive position. Let's look now at Jupiter. And Jupiter, of course, wow, we've got the sun here, everyone. Um, Jupiter, which rules um, Sagittarius as well as Pisces. Obviously, the sun is a beautiful omen for those signs. 
Now, Jupiter with the Sun, the two most benefic planets of our solar system, there is expansion, there is the possibility to see that justice will bring you the Sun, and the Sun is clarity, it's success, it's reconciliation, it is uh, happiness, it's a birthing, right? The Sun also speaks to healthy ego, but also being out there, remember, the Sun rules Leo. So what we can gain is recognition. What we can gain is what we've created. We're seeing the seed of that or the, the uh, recognition, the accolades. Um, I, I, it's as though I see the six of wands here. There's success here. What a beautiful energy. And the sun obviously speaks to the inner child mm. as well. The inner child or children or childlike energies. So I feel here that um, for Sagittarius and Pisces is a wonderful omen here. And uh, Jupiter, Jupiter also, remember, has, as I said, where there is, where there's been no truth um, and injustices, maybe the sun is bringing us the truth, the clarity and possible justice or where there's been too much ego I'm going to say and uh, inability to speak one's truth where there's possibly been deception as well the sun will clear the air okay let's look at the last position position number seven Kronos and Saturn now Saturn rules Capricorn as well as uh, Aquarius we've got the nine of coins here the nine of pentacles so nine of pentacles can speak to abundance obviously but it speaks to the individual standing alone standing strong in their own skin um, being in a place of abundance even though Saturn can speak to limitations and restrictions Saturn uh, speaks to timing as well and responsibilities so this is a time of having or taking the responsibility um, being the elder the wiser right and remember that Saturn could also be limiting and quite hard um, Saturn is responsibility and needing to take a position of of um, maturity um, and where there have been limitations and restrictions We've needed to uh, do the work. Remember, Nine of Pentacles is all about the details. It's the Virgo energy, this card. It's all about... Um, it comes after the Eight of Pentacles, which is mastering someone's craft. Nine of Pentacles is feeling abundant, safe, secure. and uh, But there's singlehood here. And... Um, Nine of Pentacles is one step before the ten. So someone that's ready um, as an individual to step out there in the world. They've got everything that they need. All they need now is that last Ace of Pentacles to complete them, to feel safe, to feel um, that they're, they're not standing alone, right? That they're, uh, they've got the support of family. Ten of Pentacles would be the pinnacle of success, right, where finances and also emotional security is concerned. Ten of Pentacles is the family card, so maybe that's what's missing here. Therefore, because Saturn can also speak to karma and heaviness, uh, for those of you that have been in relationships where you've been with someone that hasn't been pulling their socks, they have been irresponsible, there's been no integrity, some of you are going to be standing on your own, the rewards, you are surrounded by the rewards, you just don't know it, probably. Um, and possibly Saturn can also, because he's the Lord of Timing and Karma, um, maybe the timing is just around the corner pertaining to the rewards, because, my gosh, I mean, the Nine of Pentacles is much reward. It speaks to a, a great uh, ability to feel secure. All right, so, okay, I'd like to now take uh, a couple of cards. 
before I do that, I'd like to take the general energy of this full moon. So what's really interesting on this full moon, we've got the star and the sun, the two illuminaries, and remember it's a full moon, which the moon is an illuminary as well is a luminary, so things will be shown to us, no doubt, as full moons are very bright, and of course, because um, Leo is about the sun, um, so the moon obviously is uh, in, the, in the sign of the sun, it's like, it's like a new, new seed, planted because we know that the moon is transiting through the house of the sun so sun and moon together it's a possible new seed my dear friends and uh, the focal point of course is the leo uh, part of the chart let's see what the main energy is pertaining to this full moon in leo so also those of you that have made a wish in the Leo season last year, this would be the uh, culmination of it. Or um, you'll be able to see a wish fulfillment on this full moon. So what you've wished for has now grown. It has come to. It is coming to fruition. Right. Let's see. Your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So this could be talking to the new moon in Capricorn, obviously before the uh, the end of well, at the end of uh, the year of twenty twenty two last year. So uh, the seed that was planted, new moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is Saturn ruled. Remember. So uh, maybe. It is the time now because obviously the work has been done here um, and as Saturn being the Lord of Capricorn, Capricorn also rules career, um, our, what we aspire to create, our reputation, who we are out there in the world. So with this full moon, we will see that the hard work that we've done is paying off. Okay, so... As I said, the general energy is the full card here. Beneath that is the Six of Cups, which is a soulmate connection. It is a card of nostalgia and the past. It is a card of uh, trust. It can uh, speak to childlike energies. Let's take one card on each planetary position here on the planets. And obviously the... Uh, the lords or the ruling planets of the signs that are ruled by that planet. So with the moon, let's take a, a card for the moon. Oh my God, we've got the two of cups, everyone. What about Hermes? So two of cups, uh, Cancer, Cancerian people, they've got the two of cups and the star. Wow, this is a wish fulfillment. Uh, pertaining to a partnership or a soulmate connection. Some of you could be, this could possibly also be a new a new um, relationship uh, through social media. Someone who could, who you could be communicating with through social media. So next, next position is Mercury, Hermes, so Gemini and Virgo. We've got the Empress. This is wonderful. The Empress, which obviously is Venus. Um, we see a pregnant woman. We see a pregnant woman. So we know the Empress needs to be patient. Generally speaking, the Empress is a very positive card. It is a number three major arcana. There is some truth. Um, information, messages could be coming in. Possible successes with business. Uh, more so... Uh, even though it's a general reading, but uh, remember this is a general reading, but more so um, this would talk to 
Virgo and Gemini. So the Empress, uh, this could possibly speak to pregnancy as well, a literal pregnancy. So the information coming in is good. For some of you, it could be also frustrating. So you could be cut, cutting. Maybe you've been waiting on some information. I don't know if it's going to be the information you want or that you hoped for. This could also speak to a possible new business um, that is being created. And you need to be patient to succeed. Um, the Empress can also be a mother, but also uh, having the ability to create something that will give you uh, financial security, but also self-worth, feeling very proud. I mean, we know the Empress is the harvest, receiving the harvest. She can speak to abundance. Let's look at Aphrodite and Venus, so Taurus and Libra. Let's look at the love life for everyone, but as I said, more so for Taurus and Libra. Emotions, money, self-worth, love life, I should say, romance. And we've got the King of Wands, everyone. Um, King of Wands could be any sign, of course. Here with the Empress, we've got Taurus as well as Libra. King of Wands could be a... Leo, Sagittarius, or an Aries. Now, this is the uh, position of Aphrodite. It looks like where love is concerned, this King of Wands, who's very much about desire and taking action, um, there's been a lot of worry around these issues. Maybe now um, this could be a time of action, so uh, the worry could be over. Um, also, this King of Wands, he could be an entrepreneur, a business person, they could have a lot of worries pertaining to money, uh, finances, and also um, we know that the King of Wands, I'm going to say it could be a fire sign, but Scorpio could also um, come up with a King of Wands, I suppose. I suppose it could be someone who's got strong air in their chart as well. But there are worries around also leadership, um, business, in the area of Aphrodite. I um, just wanted to point to Aphrodite and Venus transiting through Pisces at this time. So she's all about surrender. Um, also, there could be possible endings here, maybe the ending of worry because uh, Venus being in Pisces is the last uh, last um, sign of the zodiac. Uh, this could also speak to secret love affairs or blockages, feeling blocked. Um, I would say that if there have been blockages and limitations, it would have been about uh, possible karma. Because this is the second card we pulled for this position, I do feel that this will be the clearing out of the Nine of Swords. So swords are about perception, remember, and conversation. Um, King of Wands does, does not fear. He overcomes fears and he takes action. He's very much about leadership, right? Fire is masculine energy. So that's the uh, good thing here. That someone also could be more business orientated and not so open emotionally. They fear opening up emotionally, possibly because of self-worth issues. Okay, and this could also speak to worry. Someone is anxious or worried that possibly their relationship is only about uh, sex and intimacy and not emotionally um, not feeling emotionally secure and happy and um, and peaceful, right? I do see stress here with that Nine of Swords. Let's take the next position, the Sun. So, obviously, as I said, the Sun is about happiness, that inner child, success, being up on stage. What's this King of Coins about? And remember... The sun rules Leo, so, but also I'm going to say because 
the sun is transiting through Aquarius. Let's uh, speak to Aquarius as well here. What's going on? And we've got the Six of Wands, which I said I envisioned in this position. Interesting. This The card of success in the position of success. So the King of Coins could be someone that is a leader, someone that is up on stage, someone that has got the ability to create, someone that's created um, a you know, successful career. For Leo, this is... Uh, Especially for Leo, this is very uh, positive indeed. Now the sun can speak to the identity, uh, but also ego. Six of six of wands is someone that has succeeded and is receiving the accolades, the recognition, um, where business is concerned, obviously, but also where one's desires and when one's money is concerned, possibly also responsibilities. We know the king of coins being a father, being a boss, how they do hold responsibilities, but there will be success. I love that. Let's look at Mars. So Aries and Scorpio. So blockages, enemies, um, desires, how to act, how to move forward, our energy. So what's how's Mars acting and reacting? We've got a page of cups. So there will be action moving forward, unexpected action. This could also be a small um, in, um, a small offer of love, an invitation, a message that comes from a physical distance, possibly someone reaping up the courage to offer their heart, to offer their cup. Page of Cups can also be a child. Um, so... Pisces comes up as well with the Page of Cups. An unexpected apology that uh, you've been wishing for and hoping for is coming through. An unexpected invitation. Um, and maybe there's, but there's been frustration connected uh, with children as well. So for Aries and Scorpio... Um, very positive. Two very, very positive cards, though. This could also possibly be an invitation for travel. With the Page of Cups and the Three of Wands. This could also be a new creative venture offer. So there's been uh, some sort of success or you've been waiting on an offer. That's taken forever. So positive message coming through and it's very unexpected. Let's look at the sixth position. How to grow, luck, divine timing, wins, gains, um, expansion, growth with the sun. So we're talking about, yes, Sagittarius and possibly Pisces. We've got the Ten of Swords. My goodness. Ten of Swords can speak to betrayal. I did say that Pisces, um, the energy of Pisces can be about deception. Something will be shown here. Now, this could also say that there's possibly there has been an ending. Um, there has been some sort of a difficult ending, a possible ending to a cycle. Remember, the original card is the sun which brings uh, the light. Here we've got a lot of darkness. So things that have been unknown, a possible ending. Um, yes, there is a promise of possible reconciliation here or there will be clarity, possible healing as well. Remember that the uh, Ten of Swords can possibly, uh, I mean, it's an ending to suffering. Uh, possibly speak to the Ace of Swords, which obviously, again, um, could be a double-edged sword. There, there could be like um, sweet and sour energies here, like mixed, mixed emotions. Uh, Ten of Swords, yes, a difficult ending. Possibly because of ego as well, or that there will be some truths that will come through pertaining to um, things that have been hidden. 
possible betrayals. The clarity will be here. From then on, you will have the ability, um, and this is for all of us, not only for Sagittarius, right, and Pisces, you will have the clarity, so therefore you will know how to overcome this betrayal, how to move forward. Where there has been a lot of ego, some of you are closing the door. Right, because the sun can speak to great ego as well. And those of you that have been uh, deceived or there's been injustices, some of you could be ending a story here. And there's an ending of the hardships and a beginning of more fun here. Let's take one more on that Ten of Swords. And we've got the Six of Swords, so leaving conflict and moving. Right? Six of Swords is moving towards tranquility, um, leaving any battles. Now, the sun, of course, is what we desire. It's what we love, isn't it? So uh, for, some of, uh, for some of us, the Ten of Swords says the end of the burden and the ability to transition, possibly also uh, move, so travel, to a warm, distant place to heal any past wounds, to close up any past chapters. Let's look at the seventh position and Kronos, Saturn. So limitations, uh, regulate, uh, rules and regulations, law, responsibilities, and timing. And we've got the lovers in the reverse now. I'm not reading reversals, but the card has come through in reverse. So someone here has made a choice. They're letting go of a relationship because it was uh, someone was not being responsible. The lovers is ahead of a heart decision. It is Gemini, so it could speak to a choice, a choice between the head and the heart, or a choice between two people. Someone is making a choice, possibly uh, leaving a commitment to go towards a new relationship or a, a twin flame soulmate connection. Um, but someone has to be single. Now, this may speak to timing again, right? But, you know, the Nine of Pentacles um, does speak to abundance. Being in the Garden of Eden... So feeling a sense of a safety and security and um, self-worth. Those of you that have been dealing possibly with someone that was very just egocentrical, uh, very um, much about the ego and themselves, um, not being responsible, um, narcissistic energies, I do feel that you could be letting someone go here because we do have someone that's responsible and able to stand on their own here someone's made a choice here and remember a reverse card for me being the lovers uh which is a number six goes back to because it says that there's been imbalances we're not at the lovers yet someone needs to be single maybe it's all about timing maybe the time has not come in to find your twin flame, your soulmate. But it goes back to the five, which is the Hierophant. We need to hold on to the faith. Um, someone could be breaking traditions here. Um, maybe someone who comes from a very traditional uh, background. Beliefs, maybe someone's beliefs are changing here. Let's take one more. So this would be more so, obviously, for... Capricorn and Aquarius, but for all of us. And we've got Temperance here, and Temperance is Archangel Michael, two major arcana. Temperance does speak to healing and um, waiting, um, tempering yourself, knowing that you need to go through possible healing before this new, very uh, important love connection comes in. And there could also be physical distance, uh, Temperance... Remember, is divine timing as well, but this could also be 
um, dealing with someone who comes from different beliefs, from a physical distance, right? So Tyrian energy here. Things have got to change. And there's been a lot of stuck energies. Now things with the planets all direct, things are starting to happen. And remember, Mars has been retrograding in Gemini, now moving direct. So we've needed to make choices, decisions. Someone here has had a difficult time in making decisions, right? And Temperance is saying, be patient. Spirit is working uh, on your behalf, right? There's an alchemy going on here. Archangel Michael says, be uh, tempered, slow down. It takes time. It will be worth, as we know, it's all about finding our balance. There are imbalances here, but there are major changes going on. Remember, I did say it speaks to the... Um, to the Hierophant. So you need to hold on to the faith. Someone could be dealing with family issues. Okay, these could be the blockages and the restrictions. Now, of course, it can speak to responsibility or someone that uh, someone that has got a lot of responsibilities, even the Hierophant, which does speak to faith, family and uh, um, hierarchy. Someone could be, at you know, that sits in a position of leadership, has got a lot of responsibilities, needs to take care of family situations. The Hierophant is a five. Remember, it's Taurus. Taurus is fixed energy. It is slow, slow moving. They need to look at their values. Will there be value? Is there self-worth? Do they have the ability to stand on their own? Right. So this can speak to short distance, long distance as well, relationships. So the blockages, it's all about timing, divine timing here. All right, but the general energy says your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. So now everyone i think i will take a card one moonology card for each zodiac sign generally the energies are good there are some challenges and remember please always remember that the planets the planets um, are frequencies they're energies and as above so below Whatever's going on up there in the sky is reflected down here in our lives. So full moons are always very stressful, but they are necessary. It's like breathing in and breathing out. We are now still um, inhaling, filling our lungs up with oxygen, with air. And uh, it's like filling up your lungs with oxygen and air. And uh, how long can you keep that oxygen within? How long can you not breathe? At some point, at this full moon, we will need to exhale, which means letting off, letting go of the stress. And uh, obviously, it's a good time to meditate on full moons. Remember, this is not going to be an easy full moon. We will have shocking revelations, uh, good surprises for others. Aha moments, surely. Okay, let's look at first position, the moon. So again, the moon does rule cancer. But the moon, since of course it is also in Leo, these messages are also important for Leo. So let's take a moonology for Leo. Leo and Cancer, I should say. Okay, Cancer mainly, but Leo as well. And we have Show the World the Real You, Full Moon in Aquarius. I'm wondering if some of you are ending, completing a cycle with an Aquarian person. Okay. 
So Cancer Leo, you've got show the world the real you. And obviously with the um, full moon, as it takes the light of the sun, something will be shown. Maybe something connected to the ego, the real you. So you've been hiding the real you. Obviously the moon is fears, yeah? Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius, okay? Let's look at Hermes, so Mercury, uh, Gemini, we will take um, one card, Gemini and Virgo. And we have adjustments are required, third quarter moon, which is very much like, um, it's sort of like letting off some of the steam. Third quarter moon me means that this is a moon that is waning. So something is going to be taken away. It's funny that I was talking about, you know, that I said uh, this full moon in Leo could be like a pregnant woman, right, where we're creating something. Um, and I was just talking about inhaling and exhaling, like relieving the stress. What I get here, um, Gemini and Virgo, what I get here is that something is waning, something is ending, and you've been very patient. There's something that you're needing to adjust, let go of. And I would say um, there will be communication, possible frustration. Um, yes, it can be connected to money matters, love matters as well, business. Something needs to be adjusted here, tweaked. Maybe that could be through communication, through, through words, through business. Through patience. Okay, next signs for Venus, Aphrodite, so Taurus and Libra, a moonology oracle message. We've got the energy is gaining momentum, so waxing moon. Something is growing here. Maybe someone's courage. Uh, someone overcoming this King of Wands, overcoming the fear and having the ability to create and overcome those fears, the anxiety. Uh, this could also be someone stepping out and um, starting their own business. Okay, so that's what's going on for Taurus and Libra. Also, overcoming the fear of intimacy, possibly here with the King of Wands. The uh, letting go of the fear of having the ability to create, take charge and leadership. Right, And possibly also someone letting go of the fear of speaking about their emotions. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the sun which is Leo and possibly Aquarius since the sun is transiting through Aquarius. So where, where is the success here? Because the sun does speak to the success and being up on stage. We've got a new start is coming and we've got a new moon. This is beautiful. So this full moon um, speaks about a new, a new seed, a new moon. Uh, pertaining to success and uh, self-worth, values, money, um, leadership, all these things come up with the new moon in the position of the sun. So yes, this could also be talking about the new moon that will happen in two weeks, my dear friends, which will be on the 20th of February, it will be a new moon in Pisces, okay? Pisces is very creative. Um, it's magic or possibly overcoming any 
any forms of ego, um, the inability to succeed and feel safe and secure. Um, a new moon is planted here. So you're seeing what seed you can plant towards being more responsible, to feel, to feel, towards uh, being successful and being up on stage. A new beginning for the sun position, so therefore Leo mainly as well as Aquarius. Right? Okay, position number five, which is Mars. The obstacles, the enemies, the courage. So we're talking Aries and Scorpio here. What's going on? We've got hold your vision and a fixed moon. And we did speak about vision. A vision of your wishes being fulfilled. Hold on to this vision. Hold on to this wish. Um, it could also be an apology, a reconciliation or anything connected to a child. Okay, hold on to that vision uh, for Aries and Scorpio. Let's go to um, sixth position of Jupiter. Abundance, luck, prosperity, justice. So we're talking Sagittarius as well as Pisces. On this full moon, we have you're very close to achieving your goals. Give us moon. Very close to achieving your goals. Whatever this goal is, my dear friends, it could be the ending of betrayal. It could be transitioning towards peace, serenity. It could be being up on stage, being the sun. It could be anything to do with reconciliation, uh, fun, children, and whatever you're creating. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, the last position, Kronos. Saturn, the limitations, the responsibilities, the blockages, Capricorn and Aquarius possibly here. And we have it's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. Wow, okay, that's beautiful. Wow, okay, so uh, the full moon in a Scorpio, my dear friends, which will be happening and it is an eclipse on the 5th of May. So releasing negativity, maybe releasing something karmic, could be a karmic, uh, karmic relationship as well. Releasing negativity and something karmic in your life. That's what's happening potentially on this full moon for you. Full moon in Scorpio, you could be releasing someone that was all about being evil and venomous. I mean, Scorpio does speak to poison, but then comes the healing, right? So beautiful, beautiful messages for everyone on this full moon in Leo. All right, everyone. So I hope that um, this helped. I hope that you enjoyed um, this reading. I'm going to take just a message of advice from the wisdom of the oracle. I'd love to hear your comments. Please like, share, subscribe and comment. Let me know what you thought about this planetary uh, tarot spread and if you enjoyed it so we could keep doing it. This can go really deep, this, uh, this type of reading, and it can be quite technical. There's a lot of information, so I would suggest that you watch the whole reading and so you don't miss any details about your sign. Now, of course, you can watch it for your sun, your moon, your rising, uh, your Venus. Uh, Venus is love and money. Mars is courage, action. Uh, what you strive to achieve, and also North North Node, which is your fate. So, what is the advice on this full moon from the Wisdom of the Oracle? What is the advice on this full moon in Leo? We've got not for you. Not for you, and it's a number six. So there's something that you need to obviously 
change, C, have the courage to change, let's say it's a number six. Six, remember, is the lovers. It can speak to partnerships or relationships. Let's see what it says. A clear knowing that something is being denied you. Rejection is God's protection. There are times when it appears that no matter how deeply you desire something, no matter how hard you work at something, the result you seek always seems to elude you. It's as if you don't really get to be in the game and you feel you're just watching from the sidelines. The appearance of this card indicates that you are not going to attain what you want right now, that indeed your dreams for that exact thing will not be fulfilled. This is a time to radically accept that not everything is available to you when you want it. Take heart for there are benevolent forces who desire the best for you and have a much clearer idea of what is for your highest good. Rejection is God's protection. Something much better will that will make you truly happy is on its way. Trust this. Now, where relationships are concerned, some relationships carry an innate seed of failure in them that is obvious from the beginning, but the red flags escape your observation or you refuse to acknowledge them. When a relationship is not meant to be, it is not possible to make it be. Rejection is a sign that you're being protected by the divine. If you are the one who must reject another, remember that you do so for both your sakes. For every pot there is a lid. This one may not be the best fit. And where prosperity lies, you can strategize and protect and systemize and invest all your time and energy, but sometimes your best laid plans seem to go awry. Um in spite of it all. Keep in mind that no effort is wasted. Fail uh, fast and learn from defeat. Then keep going. You will eventually succeed. Although perhaps not at this game, not at this time, know when to fold your cards. Looks like that's what the um, full moon in Leo will be showing us at this point. Now, of course, this is a general reading, my dear friends. Take, take it as it resonates. Um, and I want to thank you so much for being here, for taking time out, your precious time, to spend with us here. Thank you so much. Love and light and happy full moon, everyone. Talk to you soon. Ta-da.